I am Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. Begging is something that many people include in their BDSM relationships. To each person, it's used for different reasons and it causes different reactions. Begging affects those involved on both a physical level and a mental one. Begging is having the bottom or the submissive partner plead with the top or the dominant partner to receive something. It is most often used for the S-type to plead for pleasure, orgasm, or a pleasurable impact scene or kink scene in general. Used to gain release, it can also be a method of reminding the submissive partner that their body is no longer their own. And even the physical pleasure of pain or orgasm must be granted by the dominant partner. Begging can be a means of exerting control or power over a submissive. By making the submissive beg for things, it's a powerful reminder that the submissive is no longer free to make their own choices without, at the very least, the permission of the dominant. This can bring to the forefront the emotional response of a power exchange relationship. In this way, it's basically used as one of many things that keep the power exchange in the forefront of the participants' minds. Begging can also be used by a dominant during a punishment. They can request or order that the submissive first thank the dominant for each strike and beg for another. In this way, begging is a way of bringing home the reasons for the punishment and the fact that the consequences are indeed a punishment. For many submissives, having to do this keeps their minds from relaxing into subspace and turning the pain of a corporal punishment into pleasure. It achieves this by forcing the submissive to participate actively in their own punishment, therefore giving the mind something it has to concentrate on. It can also keep the submissive focused during a punishment by centering their focus on what is happening to them and with each plea reinforcing the fact that the misbehavior has consequences. The physical act of begging can be a sexual turn-on for people, seeing a submissive in an obviously submissive pose pleading with a dominant can cause significant sexual arousal in both parties. Uh, kneeling is one of the most common submissive poses, and just seeing a person in that position can by itself arouse a dominant. However, one need not be kneeling to beg. Positioning for begging is up to the dominant, and, and some prefer certain positions for certain situations. Now, begging, it can take many forms, from a simple, please master or please mistress, may I speak freely, to a long process of re repeated entreaties while in a particular position, using specific language and tones of voice. For example, a submissive on their knees, naked, legs spread, arms folded behind their back, head up, eyes lowered, with a soft tone of voice begs their master or mistress for permission to orgasm. Itself could go something like this, please master, may your slut come for you, or Please, mistress, may I come now? Please, master, or please, mistress. Please, sir. Such an entreaty can cause, or can include body motions designed to show the master that all parts of the body that they own, as well as the state of physical arousal. Um... Some dominants prefer that their submissives beg. They include statements of who's in charge or devotion or statements of submission. How one begs is really up to the dominant partner, and the dominant should make it clear to the submissive what they prefer in what situation. Begging contains an inherent humiliation factor for the submissive. This humiliation can be a great turn-on for some people. The humiliation factor can be increased in intensity by regularly 
or by requiring vulgar language during begging. In this manner, the humiliation factor can be used as a means of teaching a submissive partner humility if the submissive seems to be overly proud or arrogant. Though any acts which include overt humiliation need to be handled carefully and with much forethought to ensure they're being done in as safe a manner as possible for the submissive's mental well-being. Teaching humility is one thing. Destroying self-esteem is something else entirely. Just be sure you know what you're doing and what your, what your goal is and what actionable steps uh, you're going to take to reach that goal. Uh, begging is often used as part of role-play scenes as well between tops and bottoms. Um, most often when people describe scenes in which one partner plays the role of a child and begs their daddy or mommy to spank them or let them have a privilege they're wanting. In this way, begging increases the realism of the role play scene and makes it more satisfying for the adults involved, for those involved by putting the bottom in a childlike mindset, all while maintaining adulthood, of course. Begging as one can see, is another aspect of BDSM in which it's very it's varied in its uses. Some It's varied also in its turn-ons, and it can mean different things in different situations. And it's ultimately a personal choice whether or not to include begging in your relationship. I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another in this BDSM United podcast. Uh, we're just covering right now just some various different topics, uh, preparing for a um, our next series. And uh, we like to take time and write notes and, uh, and prepare things for you because uh, education is our kink and we like to do it with excellence if possible. Uh, it's been a joy talking with you today. Uh, you can find all of our resources, by the way, at www.bdsmunited.com. If you're listening on your favorite platform, just leave us some feedback. Uh, leave us a like, a review, um, a thumbs up if you're listening on Pandora. Uh, we're, we're all over the place, and we like to see your reactions. Uh, it's been a joy talking to you, like I said, and I will talk to you again soon.